Hi, my name is Steve New, and welcome to my channel, Steve's Film Vault. This channel is dedicated to everything DSLR camera, from photography to videography and beyond. In this episode, we are going to be talking a lot about ISO and what that means. I am a video and photography teacher at the prestigious East Korean Technical Academy here in Las Vegas, Nevada. I've been teaching this for the last 10 years plus at this school, and I've also spent 20 years in the film and video industry in Hollywood. So I'm going to be bringing this expertise to you that I've had over the years, and I'm going to simplify it in a manner that hopefully makes it easy to understand and helps you better understand what all the different functions are on your camera to bring out the best in you and bring out the best in your pictures. ISO stands for International Standards Operations. Why is that important to know? Well, you want to impress your friends and family. Now, to be honest, you don't need to know what it means. You just need to know what it is. Now, back in the days of film, ISO, also known as ASA, uh, or formerly known as ASA, was actually a standard set to the sensitivity of the film itself. And most film cameras, if you were shooting outdoors, you would buy 100 ISO film or 200 ISO film. If you were going to be shooting in like low light situations, you would probably buy 800 or 1000 ISO. If you were kind of moving around into shady areas or some uh, indoor nighttime shots with fairly well light, uh, you would be going with 400 ASA. You would have to buy the film to match what you're shooting. Thank goodness for the digital age. In the digital age, we still have the sensitivity, but what basically happens is it allows us to change picture by picture. We don't have to shoot a whole bunch of pictures in the same ISO setting. One other thing that remained constant as well from the old film days to now the video days, uh, excuse me, the old film days as opposed to the digital age today. And that is the less sensitive the image sensor or the film, ISO 100, means that you're gonna have a much sharper image. Because that means more light is gonna be able to hit that film to be able to set that image. So you're going to have a very crisp, clean image, free from any kind of uh, graininess or uh, noise is what we refer to it now in digital. Uh, artifacts, another word for it. The more sensitive, the higher that number, if you get into 1000 and actually cameras can go up all the way up to 12,800 ISO, if you're getting up that high, you're going to find a graininess to the image. It's kind of a grunginess. It's going to have these image artifacts where it's not crystal clear. Dark areas are going to be kind of spotty and blotchy. They're not going to be nice clean whites and nice clean blacks and nice clean color areas. They will have these splotches in them. Uh, and basically that's the give and take of changing your ISO. On the plus side, ISO 12800 will allow you to shoot in virtually extreme low light situations and still see an image. But the giveaway is your giveaway, you're giving away image quality. When you're outside, you want to make sure that your ISO is staying up there. Less sensitive rating, ISO 100, that will give you much crisper, cleaner images. Everything being kind of opposites in the way we look at things on cameras. Um, higher the ISO, the less quality the image we're going to have. The lower the ISO, the better quality image we're going to have. So keep that in mind as you are shooting. One thing I did not show you yet is how do you manually set your ISO? The Canon T5 and 6i's have a little ISO button on the top. Uh, if you have like a D series, you would have a setting in your uh, in the window to adjust your ISO that way. Check your camera manual to find out how do I set my ISO. And by pressing that ISO button, uh, you will then be able to adjust from auto ISO to manual ISO. So let's go ahead and switch over to our manual ISO right now. While I am doing that, I'm gonna go back to aperture preferred, and I'm gonna set my aperture to a fairly large aperture as I set my ISO 
down to 100. And we'll get a few pictures and see how that turns out. Um, then what I basically want to do is go into a low light situation and maybe drop that ISO down a little bit and see at what point do I drop my ISO to where the images start coming in clean. So we're going to basically play around with that and we'll see a variety of scenarios indoors and outdoors where we play with that ISO setting to get the image that we want. Another experiment that I want to do right now is I'm going to go ahead and set my ISO to auto for just a moment. I'm going to uh, set up my camera to AV mode and I'm going to basically take down the numbers. Okay, so with those numbers now, I'm going to turn my camera to manual mode. I'm going to go ahead and set my shutter speed and my aperture to those numbers that I had. And then I'm going to go ahead and change my ISO to manual mode. And I'm going to step through the different ISO settings to see what happens to that image as I go through the different manual ISOs. So I'm going to lock down my aperture and my shutter and I'm going to basically just change ISO settings and this is what it looks like. So now what I want you to be doing this week is play around with your manual ISO settings. As you're shooting outside, lock your ISO down to 100 or 200 depending on the amount of shade that you're shooting under to see if you can't get those nice crisp sharp images while outside. Uh, when you're shooting inside, challenge yourself not to get too far down. Don't get all the way down to an ISO 12,000. Uh, drop it down maybe to an ISO 800 or 1,000 at the most and see what you can do to try to set up the right scenario there. Shoot in either the aperture preferred or the shutter preferred, whichever you feel will fit your needs the most, but lock down your ISO to manual ISO. Well, that's basically it for this episode. If you like this episode, please give it a thumbs up. If you really like the episode, hit that subscribe button. Uh, I have so much more coming your way, so please go ahead and hit that subscribe and just uh, enjoy the lessons as they come. You will be receiving everything that I teach my students. My entire curriculum will eventually be online on this YouTube channel. Uh, so uh, hit the subscribe and keep on shooting, play with that ISO, and we will see you next week.